Today is an amazing day. Today is the eighth day of the eighth month of the eighth year of the 21st century. And for all you Chinese in the room, number eight is very important. And today also is the day the Beijing Olympics starts. So it's a big day, in a global sense, it's a big day in your life. Why? Because it's the first day of the rest of your lives. Isn't that exciting? Like, hello! You can create your life. My role here is to provoke you, and the work that I do is to provoke you to adopt a point of view where you go, well, I can create my life. So what sort of life do I want to have? And with the Olympics here, you say, well, do you want to be an Olympic standard competitor, or do you just want to be an average competitor? And whilst we talked about world-class performance, in fact, the topic of what I'm talking about today is harnessing your passion to build DCE's reputation, to build the organization's reputation. I'm going to show you why harnessing your passion is the key to DCE's future. Now, you might say, we are engineers. We don't get passionate. Passion and engineers is an oxymoron. And you would be correct. <laughs> and that's why when you choose to play this game, you will stick out from the crowd. How exciting is that going to be? Everyone's going to go, DCE, they're those crazy passionate ones. They're the ones we want to work with because we don't want to work with boring, dull, lifeless, whining engineers. We want to work with interesting people. Now, how many of you would rather work with an interesting person versus a boring, dull, passionless individual? You know, the answer is clear. Now, let me ask you a question. In the last two weeks, here you are working hard at DCE. You've spent money, haven't you? Think about where you've spent, where have you spent money in the last two weeks? How many of you bought any item of clothing in the last two weeks? Golly, gosh. <laughs> Serious? <laughs> you cannot be serious. Not How many of you have been to a restaurant in the last two weeks? Good. How many of you have been to a supermarket? How many of you have been to a bank? How many of you bought petrol in your car? How many of you have been to buy a home theatre system in ready for the Olympics? <laughs> the last three weeks. Now, in those times when you have spent your money, how often have you been blown away by the passion of the person taking your money? How often does that happen? It's rare. I mean, I live in Melbourne. I look around for these opportunities. It's very rare that you get people that are passionate. Most of them are unhappy. They're not interested in you. You are a nuisance as a customer. And the work that I do and have done for the last 15 years in six countries around the world with 31 of the top 250 in Australia and the smallest organisations in Australia as well, is to share with you a deeper understanding of what passion is, why it's so important, why it will change the way you live your life, and why it's the key to building this organisation's reputation. Now, I love engineers. I love engineers. Why do I love engineers? My older brother is an electrical engineer. I have four children, Rebecca's 27, and I have three boys. Matthew is 25, he is a civil engineer. Nick and, is, and Tim are twins, they're 22, they're doing final year at Monash, and Nick is doing final year aerospace engineering, and Tim is doing economics and biomedical science. So I love engineers, you know, I'm surrounded by them, so if you try to bullshit me, I'll be able to pick you up on it. And an older brother who's tried to do it all his life. However. I also love engineers because you guys solve problems and ladies solve problems that I've got no conception how to solve them. What I've learned in my journey since the age of 12 when I've been in business as a debt collector is I'm amazed at the talent in this room of, of Australian engineers generally, or engineers who practice in Australia. Right? However, part of the problem that we have in Australia is that many organisations are led by engineers. And my proposition to you is that levels of passion in this country are very low and it's because of the quality of leadership. It's because of the quality of leadership. And I commend you as a team and for what, what you've created in the last 13 years. It's very exciting. Shane is clearly passionate. 
I have no doubt that he's passionate. And the fact that he's heard me speak a couple of times and wants me to share some ideas with you shows me that he's committed to this because people who aren't passionate are scared of me. People who aren't passionate are scared of this message. Most organisations are badly led. How do I know that? Because of the levels of passion in most organisations. And you've agreed with me that there's that it's not demonstrated very often, and that's a function of leadership. So Theo and Tony, it's Tony there, where's Theo? Yeah. Okay, it's up to you guys, the three of you, and then the associates, senior associates, and then the associates, to play this game, to, have a, to commit to this vision and go, yes, I want to harness my passion to build an amazing enterprise. Why? Because you're going to get huge benefits from it. You. Don't worry about the organisation. You will benefit from it as a human being. Now, how many of you have children? Who doesn't have children? Who doesn't know that they've got children? There's a lot of people around the engineering fraternity, be careful. <coughs> this message that I'm sharing with you is relevant to your children as well, because you think, for those of you with children, what sort of workplace do you want your kids to work in? And I challenge you to make this workplace one that you would love your kids to work in. You go, do you want your kids to work in an environment where people aren't passionate? Do you want them to work in, or do you want them to work in an Olympic standard team where people work well together, where they achieve amazing outcomes? Now, it's the start of the Olympics. Why are we so interested in the Olympics? What is the big deal about the Olympics? Why do we honour gold medalists? What would happen if I came in here and showed you my gold medal from the Olympics? Would you be impressed? So this is my gold medal. And you go, wow, Charles, that's fantastic. Where'd you get that? I said, I bought it at an auction. <laughs> you know, how impressed would you be? And the answer is you wouldn't be. So why are we impressed with gold medalists? And how, how difficult is it to become the best? Like how much effort goes in? Have any of you ever been in an Australian team of any description? No. I have. I've been a, I was a member of the Australian women's water polo team. <laughs> I've been flat over the years. I was. I was actually a referee accompanying the team to Los Angeles at the Olympics when women's water polo was a demonstration sport. So I have represented, I have represented Australia in a sport, but how many of you, so no one here in this room has represented Australia. It's tough to get into an Australian team, let alone to be one of 433 Australians in the Olympic team. We honour Olympians, let alone gold medalists, because it's so hard. And I find most people live their lives to avoid hard. And my proposition to you is, if you are passionate, if you are passionate, you will do hard things. And it's only by doing hard things that you get better. You will not get better by taking it easy. And most Australians want to take it easy. And it's a technical, uh, my description of it is bullshit. It's bullshit. You cannot get better by taking it easy. And the game that Shane and Theo and Tony want you to play is to embrace this idea of going, well, let's build an amazing organisation. But you can't if you avoid doing hard things. So I want you to get excited about doing hard things. I want you to get excited about excellence. I want you to get excited about becoming Australia's best, one of the world's great consulting firms.